Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, we have our Marijuana Resolve show today, and uh, we are filming and taping from uh, BCTV Studios in downtown Brattleboro. Uh, and with us today is Daryl and a special guest. Daryl, would you would like to tell us who we have today as a guest on our show? Well, thanks, Vida. And today on our show, we're happy to have uh, Larry Block on. He's well known in the area here. He's uh, one of our local business owners downtown, uh, responsible for uh, one of the stores to save uh, the corporations from themselves, a real nice store, which deals in a lot of hemp products. Um, so we're very happy to have Larry here with us. Uh, and he also, he's, uh, his last endeavor before he came here was, uh, he was down in New York City, and he ran a nightclub called Wetlands, which I uh, thought was really cool. And um, so anyway, I think we ought to just uh, introduce Larry and start t chatting a little bit about his past use and what he thinks about the whole issue. You know, one thing we can start with is Wetlands Preserve because that was a very unique thing. And part of the DVD <clears throat> that I saw about it, uh, there was an issue of, uh, of uh, marijuana use in the, in, the, uh, in the club and that it was open and free for a while. Then when Giuliani came in, there seemed to be more of a clampdown about it. Uh, just yet, can you just do a couple minutes on the on the wetlands preserve and give people perspective on that? Wow, um, that's a big that's topic. A, that's a yes. Yeah, yeah. Twenty eight <laughs> minutes. Uh, actually, the clampdown by Giuliani was not a clampdown that resulted in marijuana policies changing within the establishment. It was more a harassment, uh, en masse, of nightclubs in general. Uh, yes, and that really had little effect on the policies of the club. It had more of an effect on operating wetlands and other clubs that were continually harassed by the administration at that time. Well, Giuliani was definitely uh, anti-fun. I mean, this guy was, <laughs> to this day, he's exactly. a creep. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and by the way, he'll probably be running uh, again in 12. Um, since we're here to talk about personal use, um, uh, and uh, we, we've, we've asked our guests to talk about past personal use, they can talk about um, uh, uh, pr you know, what they do presently and all of that. So why don't you, I think one of the things what we like to do is to get a handle on when our guests actually begin smoking marijuana themselves. Just some kind of background about that. When did you start and what, some of the effects and things like that? Well, sure. And before I do that, I want to okay. tell you why I got inspired to uh, be on the show in the first place. And it too. really has to do with uh, my experience in Brattleboro since 96 and generally observations about our culture with regards to the story of marijuana. I mean, uh, for, for a while now, uh, the story of marijuana is in different chapters in all of the media and in conversations, but those chapters are usually uh, anything from medical marijuana to decriminalization, legalization, to the prison system and the effect on marijuana users and, and growers, uh, to Hemp, of course, hemp is sort of the parent of the marijuana plant to some extent, but that nonetheless is another sort of chapter in that book. And substance abuse is a chapter in the story of marijuana, but little is shared publicly these days about the joy of marijuana, which is exactly. what I'm bringing to exactly. this show. Yeah. Exactly. It's like it's not talked about. Uh, you know, maybe partly that's perhaps people of my generation don't need to talk about it. They're just, you know... Uh, drawing on their experience from when they were uh, much younger and, and assume that everyone knows what the experience can be of smoking marijuana or however else you might ingest it. Uh, but on the other hand, by not sharing that story publicly and with our peers and with uh, younger folk, a lot of the, the whole raison d'etre of, of marijuana consumption is absent from the story of marijuana. So I'm here to share a few of those tales if you like. Uh, I started to uh, smoke back when I was about 14 years old. Well, and uh, well, lead the way. Well, well 14, the, by the way, is is a young I'm 57 age. 57 now, so that was right. Okay, quite a few years ago. And so <laughs> let's let's look at this way. You started at 14. So if you if a person starts at 14, shouldn't you be impaired? Shouldn't you be a bum on the street? I mean, should, I mean, your your issue about the marijuana and we can't talk about the joys because it's demonized. So, but you look fine to me. I mean, you don't look like uh, you fell to pieces or you, or, you know, so don't you, do, do you see any detrimental effect at having started at 14? Well, I, there's no simple answer to that question. Uh, you'll learn uh, what you do through experience uh, and through education, uh, through your own body and, and the changes that you go through. And that is, uh, you know, connected to everything you do, your environment, your, your, your diet, uh, your DNA, and all of that. Um, so so then really, technically, there really isn't a, a starting age. You know, in other words... There's no starting age, I wouldn't think. You can, because you can't really single out 18. 
any more than you could 21 or 27 or 14 necessarily. But in terms of uh, underage use, what do you have to say about that in today's terms? Well, when I was 14, most <laughs> of the people in high school were experimenting with marijuana. And uh, I would say that almost none of those same folks were uh, using alcohol at that age. And uh, some of them were experimenting with LSD at the time. And that was about it. So um, it, quite different than today. I think today, the, what the number one uh, growing addictive substance is pharmaceutical, you know, over-the-counter right, medications, exactly. I right. guess, is, is, is almost an epidemic. And, well, uh, more Americans are on them now than uh -huh. when we were growing up, too. Yeah. Much readily available for people. But we're getting into the political discussion yeah. more than the joy discussion, right. which and is we, I, where I, I, I think where you bring are coming from is a good idea, um, because that is one of the problems, is that, and that is why we wanted to get the use out there, <coughs> is, exactly. and also to let, it, let people know Faces, put faces on some of this stuff because, you know, once I came out there and started talking freely, like I've been doing, the amount of people that, you know, say, hey, Daryl, I support you <laughs> quietly, right. okay, they would never come on and do the show because mm -hmm. of who they are and where they are in our society. I want to drop that barrier down, though, because if they all came out, I can tell you right now, if they all came out, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be having this discussion today. Well, exactly. there are so many experiences that I uh, was fortunate enough to have. Uh, Smoking grass at the time, uh, not too many people even use the word yeah, pot. Really. That's uh, right, it was uh, grass. Some people use marijuana right. uh, or weed. Right. But grass was a pretty popular it term and you don't term. even hear it anymore. No. That's right. But I mean, I was just thinking about earlier today in preparation for the show, the, the various experiences <clears throat> that were enhanced by my uh, opportunity to, to smoke. And, uh, you know, in no particular order, you know, I think that generally speaking, my sense of, of wonder with the world was increased. I mean, it feels, you could say, well, it's consciousness expansion. I'm not sure if that's what it is. An enhanced focus, uh, a, a timelessness, an appreciation for taking the time, you know, to smell a flower or to see a sunset. Not that we don't do that when we are not under the influence, or I don't, but it just it allows for, at least for me, for a greater appreciation of many things in life that I enjoy uh, with or without that influence. Music, uh, throughout my entire life, I mean, I remember being high the very first time listening to music and was like, wow, I could hear all of the notes and I could uh, experience the music more profoundly in ways that I never had before. And I don't know how to explain how that works, but it works. Well, do you remember what music, just as uh, just an issue of curiosity, did you uh, just... It was Led Zeppelin for me, which is why I'm asking. My first getting high was listening to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> but um, I don't remember the first song I was listening to okay. the first time I got high. I certainly okay. uh, was listening to a lot of psychedelic rock at the time, right. uh, okay. Grateful Dead or, or Pink Floyd, and, and music that was really stretched out and, uh, and was really uh, enhanced by, by being stoned. Um, yeah. Pink yeah. Floyd with the alarm clocks. Come on. <laughs> well, this is a little before that time, but, but it, nonetheless, it was still Pink Floyd and still amazing. Um, but... That sense of that sense of wonder, uh, you know, is is there uh, and was there t time and again. It didn't um, change or become somehow unsatisfying after a while. And I thought that was interesting <laughs> that it wasn't something like, where well, you did it a few times and then next time you listened to music and 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 uh, got stoned, it, it wasn't available anymore. That didn't turn out to be the case. Uh, so I could access certain parts of me that were freed by by uh, by smoking. Um, Creativity, and, and this goes back to, you know, you can even look it up and research it and say, well, look, some of the great artists in history tapped into their creativity, uh, many of them through marijuana. Many of them believe that marijuana uh, <clears throat> stimulated the pineal gland, which is associated uh, with the creative process. Excuse uh, me. <clears throat> some people, I think Descartes and others call that like the seat of the soul, the pineal gland, and <laughs> that if you stimulated it, you could, you could gain some insight into your art or whatever, and many uh, great artists did that. Right, and, exactly. And, and some by ingesting marijuana for the very purpose of, of enhancing their work. <clears throat> That's and, right. Uh, uh, and certainly, I experienced things like that. I remember when I was uh, 17 years old, I was living in, uh, in England at the time, and I was a very casual chess player, not very good, and never could see very far in advance, and you know, <laughs> got killed by you know, reasonable players and all that. But I remember getting you know, wickedly stoned on some hashish uh, one afternoon and played a man who I had played five or six times before, and it was like a whole new game. And uh, I was able to beat him two games in a row. Mm -hmm. And that was the only two times that I played mm -hmm. stoned. And it was that. just, you know, well, I don't know how I was able to then sort of see more three-dimensionally or more in advance. I don't know how to explain it, but I certainly experienced it. 
and uh, wasn't my imagination. And things like that uh, are accessible, at least have been to me, uh, and have created a lot of joy and pleasure and creativity, and sometimes that creativity has informed uh, my writing or my thinking or, or, or things that uh, lend itself to creativity in work. Um, I, I find that, you know, any opportunity to, you know, to enhance my experience and not fool myself, and I don't think that I did in these cases, is, is a reasonable one, especially when we're dealing with something as benign uh, or potentially benign as, as, as marijuana. So really, I mean, this, this is a perfect example of how you started at a young age and uh, realistically uh, it added to your life rather than detracting from it. Yes. Uh, and the enhancement that you're talking about is, uh, is one that's a very real aspect of marijuana smoking. You feel better and you see things even differently. Uh, you're not going off any edges. In fact, you're much more in, you, you get much more into, like as a writer, uh, when I was uh, writing before and I smoked back then, uh, I, it would p put me in my place <clears throat> and I would just, just go. Uh -huh. And, um, and I, I even uh, would write without smoking and write with smoking. And I still wrote what I wanted to and did well, just like you were saying, before. Before. You know, you, you don't really, re you don't require marijuana, right? I mean, it's not something. Oh. I mean, it's, it's not because if you don't want to do it at a particular time, you don't have to. You don't have it's to. Not use like it. one o'clock hits and you got to go run. And, or, you know, or every or, twenty minutes, like a cigarette or something like that. Um, and there's the, the addiction process. I think is really non-existent in marijuana, except uh, fr from a from a well from a a, 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 a some a slight dependency, whatever. But I, I don't. I, I know of no marijuana smoker over all of those years who I would call addicted to the point where they're unable to function or carry on or yeah. things like that. Well, I experienced it as, a, as an enhancement and not an escape. And there was a few times that I tried it as an escape, like I was feeling blue, I was down for some reason, and I got stoned. And it was like, that was horrible because it, 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 it increased That's my, fascinating. my disappointment right. or uh, right. as people experience, if they're fearful of something or have anxiety, uh, I think it can enhance the anxiety. Yeah, right. uh, so it's, it's sort of different than at least what I've experienced in like drinking some beers or whatever, which is more numbing. It's, it's more of a depressant right. perhaps. Right. And, and so uh, marijuana smoking for me has always been an enhancement of my experience. And, you know, when I was young, sure, I was, you know, with my peers and doing this, that, and the other thing and all that. But uh, as an adult, it was more really in incorporated ritualistically into my life. It wasn't haphazard or just spur of the moment. It was more like calculated. You know, I was going to go to a concert and, wow, what a great opportunity to listen to this wonderful music for a couple of hours, so I'm going to get a little high and I'm going to really have a saturated experience where I'm totally immersed in the music. And, and that, that was really uh, the typical way of enjoying it. And you know, people that say they can do that with all, because you're going to get people that would watch this show, um, well, if they stay on long enough, would say, oh, I get that same feeling without that. Well, they wouldn't know because most of them they never do it, right? tried it. Right. And, 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 and I don't even say, you know, go out and try it and see what's going to happen the first time because with me, um, you got so many other things going through your head the first time I tried it that I don't know if I really let it just do what it's meant to do. Well, it's every, it's different. Every, yeah. and, and everybody is different. You use it to, to, for, to uh, enhance stuff for me it really kind of gave me my life back because I was on all sorts of those medical things. And those things were having all sorts of effects. So for me, it was just more of my way to finally, the day was so, you know, I was moving so fast and so many things were going on. And for me, it was totally out of relaxation. And it was so nice for me to do. You know, it's an interesting phenomenon at Wetlands you mentioned early in the show uh, that many nights when there was a, a good crowd and, and music that brought in folks that <clears throat> liked to smoke, um, the, the head of the whole room, uh, of both floors, you know, of the whole club, was, was, was beautiful because... Yeah. You get that sense it, in that DVD, too. You do, and, and, it was, and it was real. It was real for everyone that was there, and it wasn't just the drug, and it wasn't just any one thing. It was everything, but it was part of the head of the, of the room, and all of the people there felt that connection, whether it was the connection with each other, and that feeling of community, or the connection with the band and the music. You don't even have to know anybody. You go into a club like that, because we had Flat Street, okay? You didn't know anybody. You laid okay. up that joint, okay? And you're wherever you are doing it. All of a sudden, a couple strangers, hey, man. Next thing you know, you're talking, you're feeling good. It's not, yeah. you know, when, when you're sitting at the bar just drinking and somebody happened to nudge you by accident. <laughs> hey, you know, it, it ain't nothing like that, yeah. you know? I mean, seriously. Yeah. So I, I found it to be also, what a way to put barriers down and just have conversations with people. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's amazing to me. 
you know. But other people just, you know, and that's the stigma I'm trying to get rid of, uh, along with Vita and you and anybody we can, is to have, you know, we don't sit here and say <clears throat> everybody should be out doing it. Just like I wouldn't tell you to go out and have a beer. I wouldn't tell you that. But I sure would like it to be able to, you and me be able to, if we wanted to, sit out in front of your stoop or something mm -hmm. and, and, and smoke one. And, and be exactly. relaxed and say hi everybody instead of having to worry so much about the cops coming and your life being ruined and yada 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 when you haven't done anything to harm anybody and it's those stories the story of that of that joy that is an important That's component right. of well why in the first place does anyone ingest it at all i mean where did that come from well it didn't start with you know some sort of abstract idea it started with someone discovering that there's something powerful here and that power uh was can medical, be healing it can be joyous it can be community building, and it's you know rarely anything that people would say. Well, that's that's horrible, or that's dangerous, or that, or that's uh, you know mean and hateful. I, that experience is not something I've seen by anyone through, you know, forty yeah. plus years. Yeah. Of, uh, and, and that's the other issue. Too. A lot a lot of us have time uh, in this invested in using marijuana, having friends who use marijuana, uh, watching over the years what has happened, uh, and why, uh, why marijuana smokers have to be put through the criminal justice process other than the obvious, which is the old money-making grind that, 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 our, that we need to do with our new prison industrial complex and whatever. What a shame that is. Um, why don't we uh, also jump maybe to a subject like s food or sex? Um, <laughs> well, well, sex, I mean, intimacy, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's the uh, enhanced awareness, enhanced uh, tactile sense. Yes. yes. Uh, all of the down, senses are... Enjoy more, yep. you know, right. race uh, worse. It, it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you got to get around the track in a hurry. <laughs> uh, it's not just my experience. It's, no, it's... it's <laughs> uh, there's an increase of, uh, of access to, uh, to sensuality or intimacy. Uh, and it, it, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, it is, it, and that's... It, it, I consider it, in fact, an explicit aphrodisiac. Uh, it's in my in my personal experience, I really do, um, and, uh, and and uh, even food. Uh, uh, the only problem with me is with, and food is that, <clears throat> unlike sex, which I wish would would happen, I had I, I can I could eat too much. Uh, because of it, and which everybody laughs about the munchies and things like that, um, but it's it's the same. When you when you when a person smokes marijuana, the enhancement that that, that Larry's talking about is systemic, because uh, you because it affects uh, whatever part of the brain that you were mentioning a little earlier, and also uh, I really would like to know uh, if you had ever eaten marijuana, say in a brownie or a cupcake or something like that, because I noticed years ago when I when I did that, it was one of the single most incredible experiences I think I've ever had in my life. Um, and what I did was I took um, the marijuana and I, and, I, and I crushed it up fine, got rid of the seeds and the sticks, and I put it in the center of a cupcake. Unlike other people, I didn't bake it for, in a brownie for 45 minutes. I only, I only made the cupcake, which was nine minutes. The center of the cupcake was still crunchy, so I'm actually eating half raw marijuana in this cupcake. And it was only a little bit in, the, in my palm, and, uh, but it, it, it lasted like eight hours. It was just amazing. Um, and uh, my my friend Paul and I walked across the 59th Street Bridge and down the east side and so on. Did you sing the Simon and Garfunkel song? Well, we we whatever. Well, we finished. Feeling groovy. We were <laughs> well, totally totally groovy on the 59th Street Bridge, and and then and then we really because we were out a long time and we ended the day with this wonderful uh, de meal at an east, east Side restaurant. Now that was eating it, wasn't smoking it or anything else. And of course, you don't really inject marijuana. You ingest it, as you said, but you don't you don't. It, that's how that's how you do it. So you can smoke it and you can eat it, and it's a wonderful drug. And I'm tired of people demonizing it and telling that it's a how harmful it is to you. And the reason why I asked you about your age was one of our local groups here, the Brattleboro Area of Prevention Coalition, has this um, this thing going about underage drug use. And while I, Daryl and I, do not advocate underage people using any drugs, I don't even want them using aspirin, really. Um, <clears throat> but you know, but 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 what, I, but what I'm getting at is that I'm not sure that that the BA um, um, Battleboro Area Prevention, BC, PC, are really right on the mark with this. I think there's some latitude there. The same thing is true with underage drinking. They have this powerful, rigorous, we're going to lock up your parents if you, you know, and fine you and, 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 and give kids prison, teens prison time. I read it today, uh, and there's an article, I think it was in today's uh, Reformer. Um, prison time for teens, you know, who were caught doing this. 
is it, what would you tell the audience? Why do we really need to go to prison over even alcohol, even the prescription drugs? Well, you're bringing in the whole political discussion. It is. Which it, I was hoping to avoid. Okay, because good. you do that, no doubt, on every show you, uh, you do. We touch on it. <laughs> Actually, our shows, it are, up, our well. shows are a conversational <laughs> mix. Not to avoid you. But you're, but you're right. Okay, back to well, the let, joys. Well, let me just answer the first question, okay. which is have I ever ingested it? Uh, by eating it, okay. and the answer is yes, I have. Okay. However, the unpredictability of when it's going to hit you and for how long, I, I didn't favor that because I'd uh -huh, like to have it a little bit more predictable in, in, in because my, it's not like I can spend you know endless time just, well, whenever it hits, it hits, and I'll just lay on the floor. I see, me. I see. Um, <laughs> one of the things I experienced uh, over, <clears throat> over time, and I think it's an interesting uh, thing to share, particularly with, with, with younger folks that might catch this show, is that Generally speaking, and of course, there's many, many strains of marijuana and different potencies right. and different and all, and all that. Everyone, like and everyone's alcohol. different. Little things. But I think that you know, I'm not sure of this, but I think that the the bang for the buck, if you if you will, the, the just because if you take one hit and get stoned, that's your best bang for the buck. A every time you increase that a second hit or a third or a fourth, the corresponding high is not increased exponentially. It's the opposite. Uh, and, yes. and, and, and one thing <clears throat> I learned as an adult that there is an impact just generally on ingesting anything, you know, whether it's sugar, caffeine, it's right. pot, it wears on your adrenal system. And in a way, showing some more respect, showing some respect by ritualizing uh, use of anything that's going to change your chemistry and all that is really good advice because it, 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 if you recognize that you don't need to keep on looking for more, there is no more, you know, kind of like there, there is right. wh whatever, whoever you are, your chemistry, your life, uh, you can find a place where ritualistic use uh, enhances your life. And if you have the need to go on, uh, I remember in Keith Richards' book, which I just read his autobiography, he says that he survived, basically, his incredible drug history of mixing heroin with barbiturates or whatever, because he never did it to get high. He did it to enhance his music, his art, and to stay up four or five nights in a row and just be driven towards it. And he never did more. I mean, he may have sometimes gone over That's the right. edge, certainly. Right, which but his mission right. wasn't to like, oh, I need to get higher. Right. I need to get more. If you find yourself in a place like that, right. you've lost the original reason why it is that you might have done this in the first place. That's and then right. that becomes, you know, whatever you want to call it. I see young people don't get to hear that enough. Yeah, no. That's right. And, and I think it's important that youth understand that, that concept that, that uh, just because you, you smoke all day or something, that's not necessarily going to enhance what you're doing. Because the enhancement, as you said, is usually within the first toke. Whatever you get, I mean, that, you, that is, well, you can. You, well, no, depends see, on how often and who you well, are. Well, I found me, that it's a level. once I get to that spot, right? Then it's just kind of maintained. You can maintain. You never, like you said, Larry. You know, <laughs> you're not going to get any further. You may get right. sicker, or you know, get to where you're just so too tired. And a couple hours right. later, if you want to have another re-enhancement, you can do that. I mean, you know, you don't need to like smoke even with alcohol. Uh, I don't think you need to do that. I mean, you know, you reach a level and, and, and that's it. But I'm really fascinated by the notion that Keith Richards, an icon, only used it to enhance his work, not to reach for some kind of elusive high that really isn't probably there anyway. Right. And young people don't get to hear this. In fact, um, uh, I think even our adult population is not exposed to the kind of things that we're saying on this show, and I'm, I'm so glad to hear you say that. Um, what else would you tell us about your personal <laughs> use? That, uh, what would you like to know? <laughs> well, well it, 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 you, first of all, you started this program really by describing the joy of it, and you're right. Our media needs it to bleed. <clears throat> it needs it to hurt. So that's how they'll use marijuana as a, as a, as a wedge for as a, you know, this harmful substance. Um, but, but they're demonizing it. We're here in this part of the media and, and hopefully our affiliates around Vermont and Burlington and Mad River Valley and, and, and Putney and Montpierre and lots of places in the Northeast Kingdom, all over, we want the people in Vermont who are listening to this that, that uh, a, a big part of our goal is to show you the face of the people who do this kind of thing. And we're hardworking, productive, good American people. And stop treating us uh, like uh, in your own vision only and let us have our vision. Um, so Joy, what else can we talk, because since we've got onto young people, uh, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily 
advise a 14 year old to use marijuana but I think would, would it be would I be right in saying that if you knew a 14 year old was using marijuana how would you and let's say you knew the young person uh, personally how would you react to that is there would you what would you tell them well I know uh, cultural expert no but, but as a just, human well, right well let me just draw on much more ancient teachings and again I'm no expert on them but certainly cultures throughout the world indigenous cultures particularly right. uh, have ritual around uh, ceremonies or experiences that may cause a shift in consciousness right. an enhanced experience there's many different kinds and many different cultures much more powerful than having a hit of pot you right. know uh, right. whether it's ayahuasca <clears throat> or other right. you know psychotropic uh, hey, plants okay, or whatever yes, and right. you know there's respect <clears throat> and there's a ritual about it and I think that uh, any advice that I would give anyone that is thinking of uh, experiencing something like marijuana which I don't think is like anything else quite, you That's know, right. uh, that respect and ritual is an important element of it. If you keep that in mind, if you have a purpose, you know, it, to me, marijuana serves a purpose every time that I have had it. And again, that may be uh, intimacy, it may be music, it may be creative writing, it may be conversational, uh, it, it can be many different uh, uh, purposes or a combination of those, it, but it's not just like, Oh, I'm having a lousy day. I think I'm going to go. Now, that doesn't say that that couldn't be someone else's purpose. Right, exactly. But that's not where I've that's come true. from. Right. You know, I, I've learned to see it as a, as a tool as a, or as, a, as, a, as a, a, a window or door that I can walk through and, 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 and see the world and experience the world in a beautiful way. So the use of it works for you, not against you. Yes. Um, and, 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 and that can apply maybe to some other drugs as well. Because uh, part of our problem in this oh, country is drug-free. Navajos, man. You know, they went out and picked the plants out there like crazy. We make teas and, I mean, stuff that would uh, wipe you out. I mean, I, I, I was facing out there for a while, and I never tried any of that stuff. But the, uh, what's the seed I'm trying to think of that they did like crazy out there? Oh, my God. Well, anyway, they, uh, gypsum root or something, I think, was it, or not gypsum. Oh, well, they did it like crazy. The Navajos loved it, and, uh, and a few of the military guys that I was with would try it, and it was, you know, it was from the earth, but it wasn't marijuana. It wasn't any of them things, and it was just not a good thing. I didn't think. But you're right. So many different, you know, uh, peoples <laughs> do all sorts of different ritual things with all sorts of different plants and marijuana or, or not. One thing I'd like to say really quick, and we are almost up to our time, is if, a, if I would advise a 14-year-old not to do it. Okay, personally. I mean, I'll sit there and tell, like I told my my own kids, please don't drink. You know, please don't use marijuana, even though you know your dad does. But I'd like you to wait until you are an adult to make that decision for yourself. And please don't drink. I told my kids I'd much rather see my kids smoking if they were going to pick a drug than alcohol. Alcohol to me is like the worst. Um, and and, that, and that's just because because of the fact that it'll ruin their lives. I've watched more kids lose scholarships, all sorts of things because they got caught with marijuana. And that is the only reason I would say that, but is, you know, because unfortunately we're not at the spot yet where a 14-year-old or a 16-year-old's life can't be totally altered by smoking that and getting caught. Times have changed. They have changed. Quite a lot. I mean, I grew up in the city, New York City, and uh, I can tell you that many people experience the kind of tolerance that is absent today for something as benign as, you know, sitting in Central Park you know, throwing a frisbee around and having a hit of, of grass and the, with the police officer standing right there it's smelling with, it with, 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 with what he or she would describe is I've got better things to do to harass exactly right. these kids that are just seeking some sort of an uh, enhanced life experience at the moment. Right, and it's uh, how, how, many, what, how many minutes we We're have? Done. We've We're, got about a minute to finish. Okay, why don't you wrap up with whatever you want to say about your personal use and I like the joy part a lot. And thanks a lot for coming on here and talking. <laughs> well, you're welcome. And uh, maybe we'll get on to part two, and I'll tell you some. Well, some, we are. And by the way, <laughs> for our audience, we, stories we will do like a that. part two with Larry because he does have quite a. I, and I've heard some of them already. Quite a bit to say. Yeah, wrap I mean, I'll have a, 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 a wrap up more than I that I've shared with you today. Okay. Um, you know, well, well I, I would just say, you know, may you discover joy in every day. There you, go. <laughs> and there you go. And I guess with that, however that right, is, with, with that bit up, uh, we'd like to thank Joe, our uh, producer up there. We'd like to thank BCTV for giving us the opportunity to put this out on the airwaves. And for you who are watching, please, you know, inform yourselves. Right. 
We'll have Larry back again for part two another time. We hope you enjoy the show. Uh, think about this issue and try to work with us on it. We're here to help you if you need us. Marijuana Resolve, and we're at www.marijuanaresolve.org.